My name is Xavier Gaudet. I'm a professor of MR physics and translational neuroscience uh, within the UCL Institute of Neurology. I'm responsible for the development of um, novel imaging techniques uh, from the development in the laboratory all the way to the application in the clinic. My main research interest is in the measurement of physiological markers, markers of what's happening in the brain and sometimes even outside of the brain uh, in health and disease. And here I've put up a slide that explains we can measure different type of spectroscopy with, with spectroscopy, different type of metabolites in the brain. We look at the sodium in the brain, we can look at oxygenation or the measurement of blood that reach the brain. And finally, this is the, f the last development that we've been doing, has been to directly measure the amount of sugar that gets into an organ. So this work is very important. And one of the reasons for it is that within the BRC's new um, development in and focus on experimental medicine, experimental medicine is really about bringing novel therapies from the lab all the way into the clinic. And this is called the translational pipeline. So if you basically start with a molecule of interest, you need to go through preclinical studies and then phase one, two, and three clinical studies all the way until it gets accepted uh, by uh, the NHS. And what we are doing is really helping bridging all these gaps that are here in between these different phases by developing novel methods. So I'm going to just uh, show you a, a, a few examples and some of the things that have been most proud of and some of the things that have been developing here with the help of the BRC. And one of it, one of the, uh, one of the first things that I've done once I started here, I've been working with the neonatology. And the, uh, uh, and the neonatology group uh, at uh, UCLH are interested in saving babies that have suffered a, uh, from a deprivation of oxygen at birth. That can happen if, uh, in, in certain cases, and it's devastating. And their way here, the, the work of uh, uh, Professor Nikki Robertson in particular, has been to develop new methods to protect the brain of the babies. So we developed that in the, uh, in, in, in the lab. And then we are using the exact same MRI methodologies to actually image uh, these and, and find, if you want, the chemical in the brain of, uh, of the babies at birth to actually tell us whether these babies need this new experimental medicine or not, and what would be the potential outcome of the babies at two years of age. But prior to arriving here, I've been working a lot on other methods. Uh, which has been really about imaging the blood in the brain. And this is just an, a simple image which has been, uh, which we acquired in normal volunteers, in about 300 volunteers around the entire uh, globe, like from countries all over the world, globe, where we could actually measure the amount of flow that, uh, the amount of blood that reaches their brain, which is one of the most important uh, methods one of the important physiological parameters that you could have for, a, uh, for assessing whether the brain is working normally or not. For example, these are supposed to be reduced in the case of dementia, in the case uh, of patients with Alzheimer's. They're also going to be reduced uh, if you have a stroke or a place, uh, if you have a blockage of the blood and all of a sudden the blood cannot actually leave your vessels and get all the way into the brain. But all of these are very interesting markers, whether it's the chemistry or whether it's the blood flow, but the most important marker of them all is really the amount of energy that uh, cells will use, for example, in the brain or in tumors. And very, very recently, 
where we managed uh, with a group here another collaboration across UCL and UCLH uh, with a group of the Center for Advanced Biomedical Imaging at CABI to work together on a novel MRI method that directly image the sugar getting into an organ. And we've uh, demonstrated that originally uh, with tumor models because tumors are really one of, one of their really, really hungry for any kind of sugar because it's, you know, the cells divide very fast and they want to be aggressive, so they need a lot of energy. And, by, and for sustaining this energy, they need to have a lot of glucose because this is what all our cells in our body use as the main energy substrate. Now, usually this is done using uh, a radioactive form of glucose that you measure with PET, right? And this is very expensive because you need to inject a radioactive uh, sugar in, in, uh, in, the, in the patient's vein and then you need to detect it whether in the brain or in the tumor at a certain time later. But here what we really did was to be able to measure directly the amount of glucose into, uh, into the... Um, tumors. Now, what is, why is this interesting? Well, it is interesting because actually the amount of sugar that you need is not very high. It would be pretty much the equivalent of eating this chocolate bar or eventually drinking half of this bottle of a, an energy drink, a normal energy drink. The continuous aim of my research is really to keep moving uh, technologies from the lab all the way into the clinic. Now, for example, if you just take uh, these measurement of blood getting into, uh, in, into the brain. So we developed it. We managed to uh, sell it to a company that actually one of the main MRI manufacturers is actually selling that now as one of the product, but it's still not used. So, uh, for example, in this case, what we've done is we got an, a European consortium grant where there's, there will be clinicians and scientists working together in establishing the rules of the game. How should we use this method? In which case should we use it? And what would be the best method to use to be used uh, to, uh, for all the clinicians and not only those who are working in these uh, advanced BRC uh, funded centers, but any hospital really, they need to know what to do and how to use it. And this is the next step once you've developed something and you've made it available to everyone, you need to teach everyone how to use it.